There are three really common causes of shoulder pain. And the good news is they're all really easy to fix if you know what they are and if you pay attention to them. Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Candy, and in this video, I'm going to explain the three most common causes of shoulder pain and how you can fix them. Plus, at the end, I'll show one exercise that addresses all three of those causes. Now, if you were going to talk about the anatomical causes of shoulder pain, numbers one, two, and three would probably all be some type of rotator cuff problem. Between rotator cuff tendonitis, rotator cuff tendinopathy, and rotator cuff tears, rotator cuff problems make up 70 to 90% of all shoulder pain cases. So if you have shoulder pain, there's a good chance you have some sort of rotator cuff problem. But just knowing that you have a rotator cuff problem doesn't really get you any closer to treating it. So in this video, what I'm going to discuss are the three causes of rotator cuff problems, which actually give you some control because they're things that you can fix directly. And so getting right into it, cause number one is rounded shoulders. And a lot of people know about rounded shoulders posture. We all spend a lot of time sitting in the modern world, either sitting at computers, looking down on phones, driving. You may even be sitting right now watching this video. But if you sit a lot of the time with your shoulders rounded, that tips your shoulder blades forwards and rounds them out a little bit. And there's an arch that goes over top of the shoulder. And when you tip your shoulder blades forward, it brings that hook of bone or that arch down into the area where the rotator cuff tendons run, and it can start to pinch those tendons. Now, when a lot of people try to correct this, both through self-correction or things people tell them or going to physical therapy, a lot of times the focus is on pulling your shoulder blades back and squeezing your shoulder blades together. But that's not always fixing the primary cause because the movement in this way of the shoulders which is what gets addressed by pulling your shoulder blades back, isn't as big of a problem as the forward tipping of the shoulders, which brings that hook of bone, the acromion, down into the area where the rotator cuff tendons run. And so rather than thinking about squeezing your shoulder blades back, it's actually better to think about lifting your chest up. And when you lift your chest up and extend through your upper back, it naturally brings the shoulder blades backwards along with that motion. And you don't really have to think about squeezing your shoulder blades back together. In fact, sometimes squeezing your shoulder blades back together, particularly if you're really pulling them back or if you're doing rows with a band in physical therapy or at the gym, when you pull your shoulders too far back and pull the elbows behind you, it can actually cause a forward tipping of your shoulders if you're really focusing on pulling the elbows back. Additionally, extending your elbow behind the plane of your body like this causes a lot of extension at the shoulder joint. And because of the way the ball and socket joint works mechanically, when the elbow goes backwards, the ball glides forwards into the socket, which brings us to the second cause of shoulder pain, and that's an anterior glide where the shoulder ball glides too far forward in the socket, and that can start to cause pinching in the rotator cuff tendons, particularly when you do things like reach overhead or reach across your body. And so if you get shoulder pain when you're reaching above your head or reaching across your body, there's a good chance that you may have a forward glide of the shoulder. Now, how do you fix that? Well, number one, you want to avoid positions where your elbows go really far back behind your body. That may be when you're doing rows, just pulling your shoulders to your sides and squeezing the shoulder blades back, but not letting the elbows come way back. That might be avoiding reaching for things way back behind you, like reaching in the back seat of a car. Another common stretch that people do for shoulder pain is they'll stretch their chest muscles, either stretching like this up against something or stretching in a doorway where they have their arms on the door and they really lean into the door. But that sort of lean causes a forward glide 
of the shoulders. And so if you are going to do those type of things, you want to keep your elbows at or in front of the plane of your body. And actually, that's a good rule of thumb, is to keep your elbows in line with your body or slightly in front of your body. Now, the more you do problem number one, that forward tilt of the shoulder, that accentuates the elbows going behind the body too. So if you think about one chest up and two elbows at or slightly in front of the plane of the body, that's going to fix problems number one and problem number two. Now, problem number three is internal rotation of the shoulders. Your shoulder, again, is like a ball and socket joint, but that's not a perfectly round ball. The ball actually has little bumps on it, and depending on which way you rotate the ball in the socket, it brings one of those bumps that has an attachment of your rotator cuff tendons underneath the arch of the shoulder. And when you do that, you're more likely to pinch those tendons, particularly as you raise your arm up, for example, reaching up with your thumb down. Now, it's kind of abnormal to reach like that, but people often reach for things like this, where they're going to reach for something in the refrigerator or reach for something out of a high closet, reach for a dish on a shelf, where you're reaching with your fingers up and your thumb down to grasp things. And that also puts you in a position of internal rotation of the shoulder when your elbow starts to flare and your thumb goes in a downward motion. So if you do have trouble reaching for things above head, one tip to think about is keeping the elbow in or keeping the thumb up. And if you reach for something with your elbow in and your thumb up, elbow in and thumb up, it's much easier and often much less painful, often instantly, than reaching with the thumb down. Now, if you do have to, say, grab a dish off of a high shelf in a cabinet, you might have to pinch it like this, but reach up with the thumb up then turn the forearm, not turn the whole arm. You can pivot your forearm independently of your upper arm, but a lot of times we use internal rotation to substitute for forearm pronation. So instead of doing shoulder internal rotation like this, reach up with your elbow in and thumb up, then turn the forearm like that, grab what you need to, and bring it back down. So those were the three most common causes of shoulder pain, the majority of which is rotator cuff problems. Now, how do you do an exercise that addresses all three of those problems in one exercise? Well, one great exercise is to stand with your back up against a wall and get your lower back pressed flat against the wall. Now, your upper back may or may not touch, and that's okay because you're thoracic spine should be rounded a little bit forward. And so it's normal not to have your shoulders touch all the way. So get your lower back flat and then think about lifting your chest as much as you can without letting your lower back arch so that your lower back leaves the wall. So keep the lower back flat up against the wall, arch your chest up, and that helps with problem number one, the forward tipping of the shoulder. So lift the chest, then you're going to bring your elbows in front of you, which addresses problem number two, and then externally rotated, which addresses problem number three. Now you're going to bring your elbows back towards the wall, but not behind the plane of your body. And think about keeping the arms externally rotated or turning the back of your palms towards the wall, and then go back towards the wall as much as you can, again, without letting your lower back leave the wall, without letting your elbows go behind the plane of your body, and without letting your arms internally rotate. So you keep the elbows slightly in front of the body, externally rotate the arms, bringing the palms back towards the wall, and then go as far as you can in that direction, and then start to progress upwards all of this being in a pain-free range. So if you start to have pain at any point in this process, just stop where you are and hold that position. You go back like this, start to move upwards, and then when you get to a point where you can't go any higher without your lower back leaving the wall, then you hold that position for 10 seconds. 
And then after you've held for 10 seconds, then bring your arms back down and then do it again. So externally rotate, bring the arms back towards the wall, but not elbows behind the body. Keep your lower back flat and then start to raise the arms up. This should feel pretty tiring. So it's okay if this doesn't feel easy. And hold for 10 seconds and then come back down. Bring the elbows out, externally rotate, start to slide your arms up the wall, go as high as you can comfortably while keeping the lower back flat on the wall. Hold 10 seconds and come back down. And try to repeat that up to 10 times. If you're only able to do five when you start, that's okay. Just start from where you're able to and work your way up. You don't want to cause any additional pain or discomfort when doing the exercise. But by doing that exercise, you'll address all three of the problems, which again, just for review, is shoulders rounded up down to forwards. So you're going to lift the chest, elbows going too far behind the body. So you're going to keep the elbows in front of the plane of your body going into too much internal rotation. So you're going to stay in external rotation and then progress your arms overhead, holding 10 seconds and then coming back down. So hopefully you did find this helpful if you do have shoulder pain. If you are in the St. Louis area and you need some more help for shoulder pain, we'd be happy to help you out here at More for Life. And no matter where you're watching this from, if you found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.